Mickey, obviously, you know, you guys are in the middle of summer workouts right now. Just how do you feel about where the team is as a whole right now? Uh, I think it's in a good spot. Uh, the kids came back from uh, their break after spring football with a, a great attitude. Um, we've got some guys that play a lot of football around here, so they get it. And uh, they're doing a great job of leadership, and then we're just starting to develop. Obviously, you know, we were here last year talking a lot about, you know, getting – not beating Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back back. Team you're, up north. You're in that same boat again. So kind of what – is there any different – any different point of emphasis this year? I mean, to me it's the same. You know, we all know – we all know the goal around here. So the emphasis is still the same. That's part of it. So it's got to keep – keep grinding. There was a lot of, you know, talk last year about, you know, injuries and you guys dealt with. Is there anything you looked at this offseason in terms of – things you need to do differently in terms of injury prevention? Um, I think we do that every year. We um, we analyze what we do, how we do it, why we do it. Um, we have a lot of resources around here to help us um, you know, come up with the best plan. Um, you look at kind of how we practice, how we, when we practice, what we eat, how we eat, when we get our sleep. It's, it's, it's a gamut of things that we look at. I think you do that every year, and last year was no different. Do you study, um, when you study that, do you feel like you guys find it's more based on luck, especially with a violent sport like football? When injuries happen, is it mostly based on luck or bad luck? <laughs> I mean, I think you got to turn over every, in the jobs that we do, I think you got to turn over every stone from a sports performance standpoint, from athletic training to physical rehab to nutrition, strength conditioning, speed development. All that you have to look at. You have to look at equipment. Um, I think that's just what you have to do every year and kind of see how you do things and how you can do it better, and, and you do. I think a lot of people from the outside looking in thought there was an increase in soft tissue issue injuries and that sort of stuff. Is that made up? Is that correct? How do you view it? I mean, to me, it's no different than any, any other year. Um, the problem was the, one of them was Jackson. Yeah. And, yeah, and the way he got, I mean, I'm not supposed to talk about injuries, but the way he got hurt wasn't your typical. So, yeah, that's it. Because of the hit, the way that he was Yeah, the way he got hit. Line, yeah, he awesome. got he got kind of hinged yeah. over. Yeah. I mean, originally I thought he hurt his head, which right. I think everybody did in the stadium. But Yeah, it looked like target. Yeah, just one of those things. And we did a lot of research of in the NFL now when they deal with that, you know, what their what their plan is. So there's a lot of talk about the, the turf and how the NFL wants to get rid of that turf and blah blah blah. I mean you really gotta you really gotta look at the what research is real and you really gotta look into all those numbers. I know, I know it's a point of interest for really everybody. I get it, but it is the, the players association, the NFL and the NFL, the NFL players association is pushing it. It's not like it's you know, like a media creation or something like that. Those oh, are, yeah, they yeah. do. So, but if I guess if players have a concern, do you have to look at it more closely? Just, I mean, because you I know mean, what I mean? If it's coming from 100%. Players, I think the facilities people that looked at all that, they looked into all of it, and you just continue to look into it. But, yeah, I, I you just got to be careful with the studies that you read. Like, is it just a study or is it just, like, somebody giving you some information? Obviously, you had a couple situations last year, like with Jackson, with Travion, where those guys tried to play through injuries yeah. and they were just never able to quite get right. Is there anything that you learned from that that maybe changes your approach? You know, again, I'm not the head athletic trainer, so um, I just think the kids want to play and they try to. You know, yeah. football is a tough sport, and you just got. You know, you, I think the only time you're fresh is like probably early May, in May, and then just, you know, football's, football's part of it, so, yeah. You mentioned that, you know, nutrition aspect. How important is that, you know, what Kayla does with the players in terms of getting their diets right? I mean, again, when I, I think it has more to do than we put emphasis on it, but it's, it has a lot to do with it. I mean, you are what you eat. I mean, that, was, that used to be a slogan back when I was in middle school. You are what you eat, and eating hard and eating healthy, or eating healthy and uh, eating clean, it's really hard for a 17, 18, 19 year old. You know, we have we have a few meals up here a day, but they leave the facility, and so we really got to work on you know 
you can see all the information around here with the TVs and education. And, you know, we do the IDEXA scan, which measures body fat and bone density and uh, lean muscle mass. And you have to, everything has to be based off of that, not just, not just weight. When you're determining like what a player's weight should be, how what's kind of a balance here? Like Caden Curry was talking this spring, like he gained 15 pounds and he thought he was slower. Like how do you kind of balance that? I mean, what your I think number one it comes from the science that you that you get from the scans, what your body can hold, how much lean muscle mass your frame can hold. That's number one. Number two, what position do you play? It's hard to play defensive end at 195 pounds in the Big Ten. It just is. So. And then speed and athleticism and change of direction, all those go into it. And it's not, it's not, the, it's, it's, it's a conglomerate of people that advise the players what they should weigh. And then you take and you say, okay, this is, but it's all, it's all based on leanness. The fastest guys that we've ever had here, Denzel Ward was a 6.5% body fat in a DEXA scan. That's like ridiculous. Fastest guy we've had. Terry McLaurin was the second leanest guy fastest guy we had so speed leanness muscle mass obviously genetics play a part the amount of force you produce all that stuff goes into all those decisions yeah, Kate, Kate's up to 260 according to Larry Johnson now I mean did, yeah does he but does he look like a different guy I mean I mean does from well, speech it's, it's funny you ask that because we just we just did uh some of our I don't want to say testing but we looked at some evaluation things and he ran pretty fast he yeah. was the fastest D lineman that we had today yeah so it's pretty good yeah yeah, so it's, it, it was almost like you know, it was came funny. on, came off, and moved. So he, he, the biggest problem with the freshmen is they're like they're insecure. They think they got away yeah. a lot, and you don't have to. You, you have to be able to do your job. You have to stop the run. You have to be able to rush the passer. Like that, have, have to be able to bend. And a lot of guys come in like scared to death. I gotta get it big. I gotta get big. I gotta get big. Easy. No, you don't. And the first thing we do is that scan, and it tells you so much about. And then obviously Kayla gets them on a diet plan, and you start training them for the, for the position that they play and what they got to do. Job description. Yeah. Hey, Nick, it, it just amazes me though how in depth y'all get individually with each guy. How much? I'm not looking for a specific number. How much time does that take? I mean, how, how involved is that? It takes a lot. Again, because you have you have a specific program based on position. You have specific programs based on individual needs and qualities that they either are weak at or strong at, enhancing yeah. the strengths, working on qualities. It's just, and then you got 120 guys and you're only allowed eight hours a week or whatever it is. It's like, a lot of it is education. A lot of it is, you know, just trying to fit them in the right buckets and try to develop them as best they can. How do you, who, give me an example. We've talked about this before, but give me an example of a, just maybe a person's not here anymore who transformed maybe the greatest during his period. Yeah, yeah. Is there a guy, I mean, give me one example. Of what I mean, now that he's in the media, I'm, I like to use Joshua Perry, because yeah. I mean, he was he was a 220 pound, I show recruits all the time, and we have a list of guys that yeah. we show, but he was a 220 pound outside linebacker that, you know, how many years later, three or four years later, he's 250 pounds, faster, more explosive, stronger. His body, it looked completely different. Now, I'm not, I was going to say something, but he'll, he'll hear it. So I'm going to just continue to keep doing that because yeah. he's, yeah. he's big as hell right now. Yeah. <laughs> so was he skinny fat when he showed up? No, he was just That's skinny. That's what Jeff Ulanek always said. Yeah, skinny fat. He, yeah. No, he, just, he was just skinny and, you know, needed yeah. to develop. Um, He's one I, I love to use. Terry McLaurin, um, who was you know whatever, and leaves here at 205 and second fastest guy we've ever had here. Yeah. Do you see a lot where a guy can maybe be the same weight as Ferger four years he was as a freshman, but he learns how to play faster? One hundred percent. Raekwon McMillan was a perfect example. He walked in here at 240. He can't he can't? You're playing linebacker nowadays. Maybe 20 years, 25 years ago, you could. He had to maintain his weight, his body changed from whatever percent of fat that he had and lean muscle mass went up and that takes a lot of work because it's so that's the hardest thing is, is your diet and changing your body and but like when the Taiwan Malone shows up. Yeah. You know. Obviously you I, I would think you get info from the from the other place if they're willing to offer it, right? Yeah, it's funny it's, it's funny. Yeah, we we've had two old miss guys that number one, their strength coach used to be an intern here, Nick Savage. Right. 
And then uh, we just hired A.T. Turner from Ole Miss, so he knows he's, him and uh, Davidson Igbenosa. Yeah, so it's, it was good to get some info on him right away. And you kind of knew the background of their fitness levels and their training background, and you kind of just grow from there. So so what, what did you have to change with him, though? I mean, just in a, you know, like a nutshell. I mean, just you know, he, he just got here maybe two weeks ago, yeah. so he's more in a – just, evaluation. Uh, yeah, we, we consider those transitional athletes just to make sure their the level of progression is different than, you know, say uh, Donovan Jackson, who's been here, yeah. you know, yeah. for three years now, where uh, Davidson got here in January and he needed to gain weight because he was skinny and maintain that speed and work on flexibility and, you know, all those things. Yeah. That, that, hey, what, 